Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair, well, pinball video for you this evening. We've already repaired it. We've been working on this 1976 Bally Flip Flop pinball machine and we believe we have it ready to play and up and ready to go. So we're going to test it out, play it a little bit, and uh, we figured we'd film it for you and you can play it along with us and see how the thing is. We have a whole row of Bally EMs that we're working on right now. There's a flip-flop and then right next to it you see the Bally Knight Rider. It's a cool game. And then next to that we have a Bally Freedom. So those are the ones that are coming up in the near future. But uh, we finally got this one done. We're working on it for a customer. And if you didn't see the repair videos when he brought it to us, it didn't work right. And now it does. So it'll give us something to play. Um, I had one of these years ago and liked it. <laughs> That's a cool game. Uh, we went through and did a video on kind of what condition it was in when we got it. We haven't done a ton cosmetically to it. We did a little bit to the play field, but um, the cabinet has got a little wear. Um, but we're not really going to repaint it or anything. You can do that, but it's a very time-consuming process and beyond what we're going to do here. But uh, we did a video showing kind of the condition that we got it in. We did a video showing us working through the bottom, the back, the the bottom of the cabinet, working on all the uh, stepper units and relays and all of that. We did a video showing the back box and uh, working on the back of it with that awesome back glass in it. We did a video showing the bottom of the playfield. That was the video where I caught the thing on fire. So if you didn't see that, go back and check it out. Then we did a video where we redid the playfield. Lots of videos on this one. Then we did a video where we fixed all the little minor things that were acting up. And uh, we're ready to play it now. So we'll do this video about playing it. Um, I think we've got most of it dialed in, but we never know until we put a few games on it. So we'll put a few games on it. And that will uh, reveal, hopefully, anything that's still messed up with it. But it's a really cool game. has like a a western theme but the name flip flop kind of has the you know it's it's it makes it a little more uh comedic so it's like a comedy western theme and it's got just a fantastic back glass on it i'm gonna go turn off sonic he's driving me crazy ah peace and quiet okay so it has this fantastic back glass it has the 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 uh, side art, the stencil art, pretty much is just stars and horseshoes. This is 1976. I wonder when Blazing Saddles came out. That was before that, certainly. So I guess the, and even before Blazing Saddles, the Western comedy had already been done. So, But it's a good-looking game. People in the comments said that the horseshoes aren't supposed to be upside down. But, oh well, people. That's part of the thing. I think it's supposed to be comedic. They're they're all upside down, letting all the luck run out, people said. <laughs> you know, horses wear them like that. The round part's the front. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, so it's got really cool kind of comic art on it, on the back glass, which we'll talk about here in a minute. And then uh, on the play field, kind of the same thing. So down here at the bottom, you have these horns with a couple feathers, you know, which kind of, the, the Wild West is kind of synonymous with Native Americans, too. So, you know, like on the back glass, you've got this guy, he's a hippie. Peace, man. And so you got the little Native American feathers down there. And you've got all of these brandings, these brand marks here. If you can see my hand. Boy, you know you got it cleaned when there's a reflection on a game from 1976. Um, you got the horseshoes up the middle. Double bonus when lit. And then the horseshoes mark the bonus lights all the way up. You got the two pop bumpers, which we rebuilt. They're the original pop bumper caps, but the skirts and the bodies and all that have been replaced. I kind of had to do that because that one caught on fire. Stars everywhere, like on the cabinet. 
So this game's very symmetrical as far as the playfield layout's symmetrical, but also the stuff on the playfield matches the cabinet, which matches the back glass. So the stars on the playfield. Right, along with the horseshoes are on the side, stars and horseshoes. And then on the back box, stars in the title, horseshoes on the number reels, and even a big horseshoe up here with the valley. So it's a complete package. Very well thought out machine. You got some more cool art here. You get this this horse uh, drawing that is echoed on the back glass. <laughs> and he's bucking off this cowboy whose gun is coming out of his holster. He looks completely surprised. Look, his dentures flew out. Maybe he's a little too old. To be uh, <laughs> to be riding a bucking bronco, right? <laughs> ah, you got the little wagons, which are also on the back glass. Just very well done as a complete package. Very cool. And then you got this barn up here. Which is also on the back glass. Very cool, very cool. Um, so we got to talk about the back glass. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it because we talked about it in the very first video. So I'll try to go as fast as I can so it doesn't take up too much time. But this is probably the most complex back glass I've seen on one. Now some have more going on. But the thing with this one is that it has a lot of colors in it. It was silk screened, which I don't know, you know, in 1976, I would assume that was still kind of done by hand. I don't know. I might be wrong about that. Uh, but, you know, if you know anything about silk screening, basically you lay the glass down and then you have a screen, like an actual, like a screen door, like a screen that goes over it that you uh, kind of squeegee paint on. They may have had a machine that did that autom automated. Um, but each screen, you had to have a screen for each color. So you would w lay down a clear piece of glass. And then in this one, they probably sil silked the black lines on first. Because they're on top of everything. So they did a black one. Right? They let that dry. And then maybe they did a brown one. Right? But if you look, damn, that's another color. Good Lord. So, look, there is a brown fence post, and then there's a darker color that complements it. I don't know if I can... It's not black, though. Let's see if I can find a better way to show that. There's... Uh, so there's a brown, a dark, dark brown, and then black for like all the lines. And then there's also this lighter brown that the saddle is, that this horse is. All right. So there's three different browns plus black. And then, now they've, they're already using brown, but look how they did the guy's faces. It's two other browns. <laughs> So that's five, okay? And everything usually has like a light and a dark. So the dude's handkerchief, light green and dark green, so that's seven. His shirt, this, this camera isn't showing it super well, but that's like a really nice red with a, a kind of darker red. So that's nine, okay? Um, the purple with a darker purple, that's 11 yellow that we're looking at here, that's 12. Uh, what other ones am I missing? There's a second yellow, which is kind of an orange, that's 13. 
right? On and on it goes. So the blue, there's two different blues. 14 and 15, but one of those blues is lighter than that blue. See it? That's three different colors. 16. And then you've got white, that's 17. Um, and then I probably missed a couple other ones. So it's just really complex with a lot of labels. So they have to silk screen that each time and let the paint dry, do it again, let the paint dry, do it again, let the paint dry. Very expensive. It's crazy that they would even go through all that trouble to do that. Looks like this is a different color than the skin tone, too. So, just probably the most complex back glass I've seen as far as just different levels of uh, just the work involved in it. And they would have had to spend more money each time that they did that. So, the, the picture here is just fantastic. I'm not saying this is the best back glass ever. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm saying it's one of the best, and it's probably the most complex as far as the process to create it. Some of the newer ones had, had more going on, but it was printed or it was easier to, to, to make. This one would have, would have been very hard to actually create. And they did it as a process where they, you know, they made thousands of these. So very impressive. So it's this kind of comedy scene. You've got the horse here that's bucking this guy that's trying to ride the horse. And we'll talk about that in a second. You got the horse over here watching and it, they're all laughing. So the horses are so happy that they're they're bouncing these guys around. And really, it's just this one guy. He's the only one stupid enough to do it. The other ones are just standing around watching. So you got these three guys on the fence post just laughing. A couple more over here just laughing. <laughs> and you got the Indian guy over here saying, Peace, man. And his horse has little daisies in his... In his uh, <laughs> and his bridle um wow a little dog okay so two things i wanted to point out real quick about the about the uh the way they drew it so you know whoever drew this obviously great artist very good with caricatures right but the 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 horse is very comedic but whenever I saw his face, it reminded me of something. See the kind of the, the way he's drawn the muscles and stuff, and the horse is turned around with his teeth bared, right? And then this one over here has his teeth bared too. And, uh, you know, if you were a great artist, surely you would know about Leonardo da Vinci, right? Especially if you're going to draw horses, because he, he painted this famous horse painting. So let me show you that real quick. Now, this is the comedic version of that. So I'm not saying it's this guy's Leonardo. I'm just saying I'll bet, I'll bet he had that in mind whenever he, uh, he kind of came up with these little caricatures. So in 1503, Leonardo da Vinci was hired to paint a mural called the Battle of Anghiari. I'm going to murder all of this, all of this, right? For the Sala del Gran Consiglio, the recently rebuilt Great Council Hall of the Palazzo Vecchio in Florence during the first years of the city Republican government. So he started painting this painting about this battle, and he supposedly never finished it. Now, they don't really know the whole story. He may have finished it. He may have not finished it. And uh, many years later, the, the whole place was remodeled, and the guy that remodeled it, this great architect and painter, uh, they was a huge fan of Leonardo's, of course, and so they believe that he may have actually left the painting on the wall and covered it up. So now it, it's not there today, but they've done some drilling through the walls and stuff, and it looks like the painting, it's highly likely that the painting is actually still painted on the wall behind the wall that you see, but the paintings on the current wall are so amazing that they can't tear them down to get to the Leonardo because it would destroy another masterpiece to try to reveal the original masterpiece. But anyway, so Leonardo painted this battle, and in the battle there are these horses fighting, right? So we don't have a picture of the actual painting, but we've got some copies. He worked on it for years and years and years and supposedly never finished it. But we've got some copies that other artists would go there and look at him while he was painting and make a copy, right? So one guy, uh, Rubens, let me see what his real name is. What is his whole name? Peter Paul Rubin 
painted this supposedly while looking at the original, but look at the way he did the, this is how Leonardo did the horses. The horses, so there's this battle scene going on. These guys are fighting and the horses are fighting. And they've got their teeth bared and their nostrils flared and you can see their muscles bulging and everything and everybody's all kind of clumped together and everything, right? And look at this one up here. All right? <laughs> so that's one copy of the painting and then there's also this um, which they think may have been painted while Leonardo was still halfway through. So some of the stuff's mi missing, and this is just somebody's copy of it. Uh, but a similar thing. The horses are fighting, and uh, they're going at each other. All right? So I always thought that that kind of looked kind of like the, the way the horses are acting on the back glass, where they're all contorted around, and you can see all the muscles and their their heads in weird positions with their teeth out and everything. This one, though, of course, is showing the horror of war, and then the other one's showing the funniness of a, a dude ranch. So obviously not Leonardo da Vinci, but a similar kind of thing going on. You know, whenever you see contorted horses, you have to think of that, right? And so the other thing I want to talk to you about is there's this old song that I thought was appropriate. This poem, actually. So what they're showing here is this guy's trying to tame this horse, right? So back in the day, the way you did that was you tied the horse up and you jumped on his back and then whoever could ride on him until he stopped bucking you off, tamed the horse. And if the horse was a real badass, it, you know, it could really hurt somebody like this guy's losing his dentures. He, he maybe should have stayed home that day. <laughs> right. So there is this old song. It's a poem from 1915 by Curly Fletcher called The Strawberry Roan. And I think that's what's going on here. So it says, I was hanging around town just spending my time out of a job not earning a dime. A feller steps up and he said, uh, I suppose you're a bronc fighter from the looks of your clothes. You figured me right. I'm a good one. I claim. Do you happen to have any bad ones to tame? Said he's got one, a bad one to buck at throwing good riders. He's had lots of luck. I, I gets all head up and I ask what he pays. To ride this old nag for a couple of days. He offered me 10. I said, I'm your man. A bronc never lived that I couldn't span. He said, get your saddle. I'll give you a chance. In his buckboard, we hopped and he drives to the ranch. I stayed till morning and right after Chuck, I stepped out to see if this outlaw can buck. Down in the horse corral, standing alone, is an old caballo, a strawberry roan. His legs are all spavined. He's got pigeon toes. Little pig eyes and a big Roman nose. Little pin ears that touched at the tip. A big 44 brand was on his left hip. <sighs> Missed opportunity there. <laughs> you necked an old with a long lower jaw. I could see with one eye he's a regular outlaw. I gets the blinds on him and I sure is a fright. That one doesn't have any blinds on him either. Sure is a fright. Next comes the saddle and I screw it down tight. Then I steps on him. Then I steps on him and I raises the blinds. Get out of the way, boys. He's going to unwind. He sure is a frog walker. He heaves, he heaves a big sigh. He only lacks wings for to be on the fly. He turns his old belly right up to the sun. He sure is a sunfishing son of a gun. He's about the worst bucker I've seen on the, on the range. He'll turn on a nickel and give you some change. He hits on all fours and goes up on high. Leaves me a spinning up there in the sky. I turns over twice and I comes back to earth. I lights in a cuss in the day of his birth. I know there are ponies that I cannot ride. There's some of them left that haven't all died. I'll bet all my money the man ain't alive that'll stay with old Strawberry when he makes his high dive. So that's a little cowboy uh, poem for you. Curly Fletcher, 1915. There was a, a movie by Gene Autry called The Strawberry Room too. Marty Robbins did that as a song, and Michael Martin Murphy did that. He's the man if you don't know about Michael Martin Murphy. So anyway, that's enough for the back glass. Let's look at the instructions, and then we're going to play it. Because, you know, 
Every game is better if you read the instructions. Insert coin and wait for machine to reset before inserting coin for next player. One replay for either top rollover button made when lit for special. Special when lit. Special when lit. Now that can be changed in the settings. You can also make it where the special gives you an extra ball. Two top rollover buttons light alternately to score special when bonus reaches 19,000. So when you get your bonus ladder built up to 19,000, those will start lighting up. That's what gives you that opportunity. Side saucers light alternately to score extra ball when the bonus reaches 11,000. So these saucers here, you land in a lot. It says extra ball when lit, extra ball when lit, and it'll kind of bounce back and forth. Bottom lanes light alternately to score 5,000 when the bonus reaches 11,000. 5,000 when lit, 5,000 when lit. I haven't paid much attention to that. I need to watch that. One bonus advance for each flip. So by flip, they don't mean this flip. They mean this flip. So this has this little, this little uh, mechanism that when you hit this target, it pulls a coil in that flips this over. See the little pin there? So basically, there's one coil below this target. And there's a little hole right there with a pin attached to the coil solenoid, and one there too. So whenever you hit it, whenever that coil fires, it pushes both of those pins up. Well, whichever side the flag's on, it effectively makes it reset. Right? So if it comes up now, it would hit that and knock it like that. If it comes up now, it would hit that and knock it like that. Brilliant little device. So every time you flip one of those, uh, you get a bonus. It, it works up the bonus ladder. Mushroom bumpers light to reset flips when all flips are made. So when you get all four of them flipped over, these light up. And then whenever you hit this mushroom bumper, which is an interesting little thing. So you have pop bumpers where you hit a skirt on the bottom and it makes a switch hit and this metal piece pulls down and makes the, the ball pop away. Well on these, when you, when you hit them, you hit this top piece and knock it up in the air a little bit. Well it's attached to a switch underneath so when that goes up it connects the switch. Just, it's like a backwards pop bumper and it's not active. It doesn't knock the ball away. But that's how you reset the four flips. And you can only do it when all four of them have been made. Hitting the mushroom bumpers when lit resets flips and advances the bonus four steps. You get a double bonus on the last ball. You also get it on ball three on a five ball game, I believe. You get one replay for each player matching the last two numbers on the score reels with the number which lads on the back glass at the end of the game. Of course, we know that. It also has this thing uh, that we talked about in a previous video. If you roll it over, which is easy to do on this game, if you get over 100,000 points, it can't display it. So what it does is it lights a little light right here that says 100,000. So it'll say 100,000, and then this might say 8,000. So your score is 108,000. So, pretty cool. All right, so I'll get a tripod, and we will set it up and play it a little bit, and uh, you can see how fun it is. Okay, folks, we're going to give it a go and see what we can do. I put the glass on it, so you're seeing a little bit of reflection. Ooh, these, these, uh, basically, the out lanes and in lanes are reversed if the, because it's flip-flopped, right? So if the ball goes down the out lane, you're, good chance it's going to bounce back in. If it goes down the in lane, good chance it's going to bounce out.
to get a good flip on it. We're not, we're not scoring much yet, people. This is just our practice game, okay? I'm going to go ahead and say that on the first, uh, since we ain't got anywhere yet. Watch this. Mm. You can wiggle it a little bit. But I've got the camera in front of me, so I'm not trying to beat up some guy's machine and knock over my camera, people. It ain't really all that important to me. Oh. <laughs> that save from the outlane is awesome. You can't, and when the ball comes out of the saucer up there, you can't get a flip on it. You can barely hit it. That's a nice shot. <laughs> oh, no. Ah, didn't happen, people. <sighs> Double bonus win lit. I think it does that on three and five. We'll have to watch and see. Well, I'll tell you, I like the flip flop mech. Quite enough. Oh no. I like the flip mech. Uh, they did it on Wizard too, I believe. And maybe Captain Fantastic, but I'm not sure about that. You'd think I would have looked it up by as many times as I've mentioned that, but. Eh. Okay, so my score was low that time because we were just getting started. I was just testing it out. So, you know, it's just how it is. Yeah, you can flip it too. I, I flipped it that time. Oh, and I may have not made perfectly obvious, but the flips you can do from the front targets, but there's also two targets on the top above each one that also flip it, and they both flip it. Uh, once it's flipped, there's no way to get it to go back unless it's the end of the ball or all four of them flip and then you hit the mushroom bu bumper. So you want to hit, like if you want to flip this one, you want to hit this target or either one of these targets. And then once it's flipped, it'll stay flipped, um, and those three targets uh, just score after that. 8,700 points on ball one. That's horrible. Ah! You got to watch them top flippers, people. 15,800 points on ball two. Now, that's even worse than ball one. Yeah, so you can you can get a flip on it if you do it early enough. No, nah, maybe not. <laughs> they both go the same height, it looks like. So now I want to hit the mushroom, get my points. Oh, look at it. 37,000 points. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I like it a lot. What the hell? Oh, wow. Hmm. 
That was pretty cool, people. Just how it went up, back down, then around and bounced in. Not quite enough. Missed everything. There's one. There's four. <laughs> All right, I'm up to 63,000. Boy, I'm getting great. We got to improve on that, people. Those kickers kick fast. 16,440 on ball one. Come on. Come on. Got to do better than that. All right, 20,300 on ball two. So it's ball three and see the double bonus is lit. What the hell? Come on. We gotta do better than this. Look at this crap. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Thirty-three thousand five ten. Whoa. Whoa. You know, I gotta say, oh, I didn't think about that. I didn't notice that. A lot of times when you, uh, whenever I play, I'll kind of, not even thinking about it, kind of catch the ball where it rolls back up the end lane, but you can't on this one, it'll roll out and it's not going fast enough to bounce back in, so. The in lane out lane thing is tricky on this one. Come on, you sucker. Don't you dare, you sucker. Damn it. You can save it. I've saved it before, but it's hard. All right, 74,000 on ball five. Ugh. We're gonna play one more game. I mean, if we're waiting for me to do really great on it, we're gonna be waiting all night. People have made that very obvious. People have told me they don't watch to see me play. So, you know, you might find somebody, a better video of somebody playing flip-flop on YouTube, maybe, right? But are you gonna find a video of somebody on YouTube playing flip-flop while reading you cowboy poetry? I don't think you are. Ah. That sucker cheated. It's starting to cheat. All right, 21,880 on ball one. Whoop, whoop, whoop. That was a weird catch. You see that? 28,880. I don't know 
know what's going on with that. We may have found our first flaw. Something's going on with the, the 10 points, I think. Room. It's out of the ten points is stuck. I think something worth ten points may be stuck because that's those pops are not scoring, or maybe it's just the, I'm getting a thunk instead of a bell. <laughs> So we're at 85, 190. Oh. oh, come on. Ninety-seven, three, ninety. All right, so you saw whenever it was hitting these. Nothing was scoring and you were hearing a thunk instead of a bell. So the reason it's probably doing that is the, uh, there's a, there may be a 10 point switch stuck on the playfield somewhere, which would be like one of these rubber bands or something. Wouldn't be these cause these are kicking. Um, so I'll figure it out I'll see what it is. Um, but everything else seemed pretty cool. I was watching the bonus countdown too. I'm going to keep looking at that to see if it counts down right. Um, looks like sometimes it may have been counting an extra thousand there every once in a while or something. So we got to check that. But all in all, I think we about got it. So I'm going to write both of those down on my list. Give me something to keep an eye on. Bonus countdown. And then also... 10 point may not be scoring right so we'll figure that out but hey it's getting there but that's kind of what the thing plays like I got 97,390 points I think that's pretty decent really for me now if you watch the other day whenever I played it I got uh, over a hundred thousand just screwing around I wasn't even trying people but hey Sometimes you win some, some, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So uh, there you go. That is Bally's 1976 flip-flop. We'll give it a little more. Uh, we'll work, work on a little bit more, but it's pretty much done. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. It's, it's a rainy night in South Carolina. Look at that. George isn't here with us tonight that I've noticed yet, so don't have to worry about him tonight. He must be off doing something else. Um, but we'd like to thank everybody for watching like always and thank you for using the Amazon link if you don't know about that down below there's a link to Amazon if you go to it uh, anything you buy on Amazon whether it be small or large it gives us a little tip because we sent you there so uh, thank you to everybody that's been doing that and also we now have a little bit of merchandise that we've made we've got a t-shirt and some prints for your wall and stuff like that so go check that out there's a link down below to that. We appreciate everybody that's been buying t-shirts. One of these days, everybody's going to mob up on me and show up all in their t-shirts. We'll, uh, we'll see how long that takes. But we appreciate everybody that's been buying. Look, there's somebody out there. Just walked off. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we appreciate that. And we also appreciate everybody that's been checking out my brother, Donnie. If you don't know about that, he's literally my brother, Donnie. It's another channel here on YouTube called my brother Donnie that is literally my brother uh, and he and I are always into something so lately we've been filming a video where we bought this little tiny building in downtown Jefferson South Carolina in the old historic district and we are trying to fix it up and get it ready for somebody to rent so we replaced the roof the shingles 
cleaned it up, painted it, rebuilt some walls, tore down some other stuff, blah, blah, blah. And we just about got it. Had to do some electrical stuff. We just about got it uh, to where we can rent it. So make sure to check that out if you haven't already. But if you have, we appreciate it. So we'll see you on the next video. Leave your comments below. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, in my opinion, this is a really nice game. Bally made some cool stuff right there in the late 70s. And this one goes right along with it. So if you're a fan of Matahari, and you're a fan of Knight Rider, and you're a fan of Evil Knievel, and you're a fan of Supersonic, and you're a fan of Kiss, and you're a fan of uh, the Harlem Globetrotters, and Dolly Parton, and have I, have, have I uh, exhibited to you that they made a lot of good games in the late 70s? This one stands up with the best of the Bally's, so I give it a thumbs up myself. We'll see you on the next video. So I opened up the back box, and when you hit the 10-point relay, it didn't hold in like it's supposed to. So it's supposed to hit and then hold itself in until the score reel goes around and until the, the uh, chime chimes. And the reason it wasn't holding itself in is because the screw had broken on it. Like the one I showed that in a couple uh, earlier, it, the, uh, some of the relays, the screws had broken. So I put a new screw in them. Uh, and that one was broke too, but I didn't notice it whenever I was cleaning it uh, in video number three. <laughs> uh, so I put a new screw in it and everything, and now the 10-point relay makes the chimes. And that was it there, but... Now we got our 10-point chimes. There it is. All right. Another one rides the bus.